Hi, and welcome to another program of Truth Outreach. This is a program that's grounded in truth, bringing you a comparison of the teachings of Christianity uh, compared to the teachings of Mormonism. Uh, and we always use in this program the Word of God, which is the standard. Uh, I'm Rocky Hulse, and this lovely lady on my right uh, is uh, my beautiful wife, Helen. And we're the founders of Mormon uh, Missions Midwest Outreach. And, uh, you know, whenever we do this program, we like to lead in with a couple of quotes from uh, Mormon, one Mormon prophet, Brigham Young, and his first counselor, George A. Smith, which we think legitimizes this program. The first quote is from Brigham Young, and he says, I say to the whole world, receive the truth, no matter who presents it to you. Take up the Bible, compare the, the religion of the Latter-day Saints with it, and see if it will stand the test. So Brigham Young tells us to take up the Bible and compare Mormonism to what the Bible says and, and see if it stands up. And his first counselor, whose name was George A. Smith, said, If a faith will not bear to be investigated, if its preachers and professors are afraid to have it examined, their foundation must be very weak. So his first counselor tells us to compare, and if a, and if a religion cannot bear to be investigated, then it must be very weak. So that's what the intent of this program is, is to compare Mormonism and Christianity. Obviously, we always use the standard in Christianity, the Bible, and we will see if, if the two compare and if, they, if it lines up. And that's the intent of this program. <clears throat> Certainly not to, uh, to bash Mormons, that's not what we're about, but we are here to do just exactly what their leaders said, <clears throat> excuse me, and that is to compare the teachings. So, before we jump into today's program and do some examining, Helen and I are going to uh, open with a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity today uh, to be uh, here on this program and to uh, expound a little bit and uh, shine some light uh, in on some of the teachings uh, of the Mormon Church. And we just ask to prepare the hearts of those that watch this program today um, that they may be instructed. And we give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Alrighty, so in accordance with what Brigham Young and George A. Smith have said, let's, let's do a little examining. The name of today's program uh, is Animal Sacrifice. Animal Sacrifice, that's kind of an uh, intriguing lead-in or, or title. But um, in the Mormon Church, in the foundations of the Mormon Church back uh, in, in Nauvoo, Joseph Smith taught that animal sacrifice would in fact be restored and would be taught. And uh, this book that I have right here is, uh, is a paperback copy of uh, volume four, The History of the Church. Um, and uh, I'm going to read from it. Uh, and this is Joseph Smith. And this was uh, in October of 1840 before the Nauvoo Temple was built. It wasn't completed until 1846. So this is leading in to the first Nauvoo Temple being built. And this is Joseph Smith. Thus we behold the keys of this priesthood consisted in obtaining the voice of Jehovah that he talked with him, which is Noah, who he's referring to here, in a familiar and friendly manner, that he continued to him the keys, the covenants, the power, and the glory with which he blessed Adam as at the beginning, and the offering of sacrifice, which also shall be continued at the last time. For all the ordinances and duties that ever have been required by the priesthood under the directions and commandments of the Almighty in any of the dispensations shall all be had in the last dispensation. Now I'm going to break off this quote here. That's what the Mormons say today is the last dispensation. I continue. Therefore, all things had under the authority of the priesthood at any former period shall be had again, bringing to pass the restoration spoken of by the mouth of the holy prophets. Then shall the sons of Levi offer an acceptable offering to the Lord. And then here's a quote here that he quotes, which is out of Malachi 3.3. 3. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord. Now, in this quoting here that 
um, that, that Joseph Smith just did of Malachi, he leaves out, he, and, and there's no uh, documentation in here, the standard uh, way that you say that you've left uh, words out where you put a dot, 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 which is a standard punctuation. None of that's here. It just ends with that quote. Well, if we go to Malachi 3.3, we'll see that, that Joseph Smith left some words out, okay, which uh, is not annotated here. Let me read Malachi uh, 3.3 again as quoted here uh, in the history of the church. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord. Period. That's where it stops. However, if we go to the Bible and read Malachi 3.3, 3, uh, there are uh, four words that are missing that were on the end of that last line. I'll read that uh, last line again. That they may offer unto the Lord, as in the Bible says, an offering in righteousness. Now, Joseph Smith stops it uh, with just that they may offer unto the Lord. The Bible continues on an offering in righteousness. Now, um, in the uh, journal, and this is all, I'm going to tie all this together so that you'll see what I'm leading up to and why this last quote was, was important. Uh, in the journal of a fellow by the name of Wandell, W-A-N-D-L-E, Wandell Mace, we find the following quote. This is out of his uh, journal, and this is uh, from the, the uh, Nauvoo in the 1840s. And he says, Joseph, quote, I'm quoting here, Joseph told them to go to uh, Kirtland and cleanse and purify a certain room in the temple that they must kill a lamb and offer a sacrifice unto the Lord, which should, be pre should prepare them to ordain Willard Richards, a member of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. Now this quote comes out of, of Mace's journal done in Nauvoo. However, the time frame that he's speaking of was before they got here. This was in Kirtland, Ohio, the first temple that the Mormons ever built, which was uh, done in 1836 in Kirtland, Ohio. And what he's referring to here is Willard Richards is, uh, is a man who's going to be ordained into the Twelve Apostles, which is that governing body of the Mormon Church right under uh, the prophet himself and his two counselors. And so in, to, in, in preparation to ordain Willard Richards to be an apostle in a Mormon church in the temple in Kirtland, Ohio, uh, May says that Joseph told them to kill a lamb and offer a sacrifice unto uh, the Lord. So, animal sacrifice was in fact uh, practiced by the early Mormon church and Joseph says that it's something that has to be restored in the last dispensation. Okay, well let's, let's move forward in time. Uh, we're talking in, in the 1830s and the 1840s. Let's move forward in time to Joseph Fielding Smith who is the 10th uh, prophet uh, of the Mormon church and in his book here called Doctrines and Salvation uh, Doctrines of Salvation, excuse me in volume 3 I'm going to read what uh, what he says now he's this is the 10th the 10th prophet of the Mormon church um, and he uh, let's see he died in 1972 so this is up through and this this book was uh, these books were done in the 60s and so this is uh, he died in 1972 restoration uh, this is on page 94 volume 3 restoration of blood sacrifices we are living in the dispensation of the fullness of times into which all things are to be gathered and all things are to be restored since the beginning. Now remember, Joseph Smith was talking about a restoration of all things in the last days, last dispensation, and here he's amplifying on top of that. I continue. Even this earth is to be restored to the condition which prevailed before Adam's transgression. Now in the nature of things, the law of sacrifice will have to be restored, or all things which were decreed by the Lord would not be restored. It it will be necessary, therefore, for the sons of Levi, who offered the blood sacrifices anciently in Israel, to offer such a sacrifice again. 
to round out and complete this ordinance in this dispensation. Sacrifice by the shedding of blood was instituted in the days of Adam and of necessity will have to be restored. Unquote. So Joseph Smith says it's coming and, and he's in, in, in this book he's writing that in 1840 just before the Nabu Temple is being built saying that it's going to be restored as part of the temple ceremony and the 10th prophet of the Mormon church Joseph Fielding Smith says that animal sacrifice has to be uh, restored to complete the restoration uh, of all things so um they are talking about, they, they, they truly don't understand, if you will, uh, what sacrifice was about. And, and, and we know, Helen, that from the, uh, from the Bible, we, we know what the, uh, what the tabernacle, the sacrifices, the offerings, all those things were for. And, and it all culminated um, in, the, in the sacrifice that Jesus Christ right. uh, provided on the cross. And so, boy, they're really missing the boat here saying that sacrifice must be reinstituted because Jesus was the great sacrifice. He fulfilled the law. Right. And so they really, really are missing the boat here. But, you know, in Mormonism, um, Mormonism is, is, is so complicated and, and, it, and it, uh, uh, it contradicts itself over and over. What I just read to you was Joseph Smith, the first prophet, talking about the restoration of animal sacrifice. Joseph Fielding Smith, the tenth prophet, saying it's going to have to be restored. Yet, in the Mormon uh, scripture, this is a three-in-one. This has the Book of Mormon, Doctrine and Covenants, and Pearl of Great Price in it. In the Book of Mormon, the Book of Mormon itself contradicts both of these two prophets, Joseph Smith, the first prophet, and Joseph Fielding, the tenth prophet. And, uh, and I'm going to go and take a, a look at... Uh, that this is in the in the Book of Mormon, <clears throat> in the Book of Third Nephi, and I'm going to uh, uh, start up about verse 17. It looks like Third Nephi 17. I'm going to go to 13, I guess. 13 is what my notes say, and we'll go all the way to verse 22. So in verse 13 of uh, Third Nephi, it says, "O all ye that are spared, because ye were more righteous than they, will ye not now return unto me and repent?" of your sins and be converted that I may heal you. Verse 14. Yea, verily I say unto you, if ye will come unto me, ye shall have eternal life. Behold, mine arm of mercy is extended towards you, and whosoever will come, him will I receive, and blessed are those who come unto me. Verse 15. Behold, I am Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I created the heavens and the earth, and all things that in them are. I was with the Father from the beginning. I am in the Father, and the Father in me. And in me hath the Father glorified his name. Verse 16. I came unto my own, and my own received me not. And the scriptures concerning my coming are fulfilled. Verse 17. And as many as have received me, to them have I given to become the sons of God. And even so will I to as many as shall believe on my name. For behold, by me redemption cometh. And in me is the law of Moses fulfilled. Verse 18. I am the light and the life of the world. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Verse 19. Listen closely to this verse. The rest was a lead up to this. Verse 19. And ye shall offer up unto me no more the shedding of blood. Yea, your sacrifices and your burnt offerings shall be done away. For I will accept none of your sacrifices and your burnt offerings. Hello? <laughs> The Book of Mormon, this is Jesus being quoted here, saying, He will accept burnt offerings and sacrifices no more. I continue in verse 20. And ye shall offer for a sacrifice unto me a broken heart and a contrite spirit. And who shall cometh unto me with a broken heart and a contrite spirit? Him will I baptize with fire and with the Holy Ghost, even as the Lamanites, because of their faith in me at the time of their conversion, were baptized with fire and with the Holy Ghost. 
and they knew it not. Behold, I have come into the world to bring redemption into the world to save the world from sin. Therefore, whoso repenteth and cometh unto me as a little child, him will I receive, for such is the kingdom of God. Behold, for such I have laid down my life and have taken it up again. Therefore, repent and come unto me, ends of the earth, and be saved. So, what I just read out of the Book of Mormon, quoting Jesus, says, no more sacrifices. He will accept them no more. Yet, Joseph Smith... Joseph Fielding Smith say that blood sacrifice, animal sacrifice, is going to be restored. Well, Mormonism is a contradiction of contradictions, but what does the Bible say about all this? What is the standard, the Word of God? If you have your Bibles handy, turn with me. Um, Helen was going to help me with some of this uh, stuff today, but she's got uh, recovering from a, from a sore throat, so I'm just going to jump into this, and, and I'm really not trying to exclude my lovely light wife over here, but uh, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and, and read uh, these different passages uh, from the Bible. Uh, in John, John chapter 1, verse 29, John says, The next day uh, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. John recognizes Jesus as the Lamb of God, symbolic of that sacrificial Lamb, and as he says, which taketh away the sin of the world. Now in Hebrews chapter 7, uh, verse 27, we read, Who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once when he offered up himself. You see, Jesus was the sacrifice, the sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice. All of the Old Testament, all of the tabernacle, all of, 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 of Solomon's temple when the tabernacle moved into Solomon's temple, all of those sacrifices, everything pointed to the cross, to that sacrifice that would fulfill the law. Uh, I continue over and uh, we're going to Ephesians now. Ephesians uh, chapter 5 verse 2. And walk in love as Christ also loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling Savior. Savor. Um, so Jesus himself is the sacrifice. Now let's let's also take a look at Hebrews 10:10. 10, 10. Let's go back to Hebrews. I know we had you there and bounced through Ephesians. Let's go back to Hebrews, verse uh, chapter 10, verse 10. By the which we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Once. Jesus was that ultimate sacrifice. When when he offered himself up, that was done. It was over. Um, it's very, very clear if you look at the scriptures that Jesus was the was the final, the ultimate. When he offered himself up once, there's no need. E even as the Book of Mormon says, uh, which which I don't believe uh, that the Book of Mormon is inspired scripture. However, the Book of Mormon uh, uh, contradicts Joseph Smith and Joseph Fielding by saying that that, that Jesus will accept sacrifices no more, the the burnt offerings and and the and the um, the lamb sacrifice because he was the unblemished lamb. He was the lamb of God. He was that ultimate uh, uh, sacrifice. Well, it's interesting that Joseph Smith translated, supposedly, the Book of Mormon in the 1830s, and yet in the 1840s, he contradicts the very book that he himself translated, and then the tenth prophet turns right around and contradicts um, this very same book and expands on it. So. Well, and, and Helen brings out a, 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 a or reamplifies yeah. uh, the point of, of the contradiction. You look at of, the dates is what I'm what I'm trying to say here is that. Well, and you're looking what you're alluding to is Joseph Smith evolved in his theology. Exactly. When when Joseph Smith. Um, uh, the Book of Mormon. Well, that's almost verbatim right out of the Bible. Well, yes. I mean, the, if that, sound, if that sounded heavy. very familiar to folks as they were listening to you read those scriptures, as it did to me as I sat here, that sounded very familiar because it's absolutely a plagiarism right out of the Bible. And 
Then Absolutely. when he moves over here to Nauvoo in 1840 and says all of the blood sacrifices must be reinstituted again, um, that's a complete turnaround. Well, Joseph Smith, you see, uh, evolved in his theology. Um, what Joseph, what the original uh, Mormon Church uh, was instituted and, and began from, uh, Joseph Smith, and and actually the Book of Mormon in its original form before all the changes, because it's had thousands of them, mm -hmm. um, very much replicated uh, Christian thought and Christian theology. Um, and actually today, it still replicates a lot of that. Of course the, it does. the Mormon Church. There's uh, not one teaching in the Book of Mormon in Mormonism today that can be found in the Book of Mormon. Uh, not one. That's true. That's a whole other show. Helen. I know. No, we got, that, that's a that's a program of shows there that we got to go to. But um, with the, with this uh, subject that we're talking about yeah, today, that's what I'm saying. Blood is, atonement cannot be found there. Which is uh, blood sacrifice, the reinstitution of, of the sacrifices. Joseph Smith um, evolved in his theology, right. and when he was making reference to this, he was looking at um, expanding the role of the Mormon temple because the one built in, in Kirtland in 1836 um, didn't have all of the ceremonies and things that they do, uh, that they instituted in the Nauvoo Temple and that they carry on uh, to, to this day. Right. Now, some other things have come and gone, and those are other shows that we'll do and talk about those things. But, uh, but Joseph Smith evolved in, in, his, um, in his theology, and he clearly taught that, that uh, and the Mormon Church says today that now this is the dispensation of the fullness of times, the last dispensation. I think that's something that we all need to understand completely what that word dispensation of time means because um, people twist that around and say well that was for that dispensation and this was for that dispensation and this was this dispensation when Joseph Smith and the prophet today speak of the dispensation they mean this time frame while we are alive our time frame from the beginning of the earth to the ending of the earth. That's the dispensation. And, and this, uh, according to Mormon teaching, is the dispensation of the fullness uh, exactly. of times. When all of it is to come together, right. when all of it is to be uh, reinstituted, all that was Fulfilled. lost, because see, Mormonism says they're a restoration, right. that, that the Christian church as we know it today... Um, and that's extremely it, important for folks to understand. Exactly. Very important. Uh, Helen, Helen's making a very strong point there, and a very valid point, that... that uh, the Mormon Church says that they are the only true church on the face of the earth because they have been the they are a restored right. church. The, all of the things that were lost over the years, um, and this is one of them, mm -hmm. are to be restored in this last time. And so, therefore, they are the culmination of the truth. This dispensation, and and this dispensation is the fullness of there times, you go. the last dispensation when everything is to be restored, right. and. And so what, what's interesting, though, is, is here you have Joseph saying that blood sacrifice is going to be done. And in fact, it was done and ordered uh, in the Kirtland Temple. Mm -hmm. The tenth prophet, as we read, says that it, it has to be restored. Well, this is the last dispensation, so I'm kind of interested. How come the Mormon Church is mm -hmm. not following the direction of their two prophets here, the first and the tenth? Why didn't how they come institute not, it? Yeah, how come they're not doing blood sacrifice? Kind of interesting, mm -hmm. if you will. Um, but it was clearly taught. They say it's going to be reinstituted again because it has to be for the completion of the restoration of all things. Right. And this is the last dispensation, so it should be here. Mm -hmm. It's not. They're not practicing it uh, right now. Right now. Uh, which is in contradiction to Joseph Smith and Joseph Fielding Smith. But then, uh, as we saw, the Book of Mormon, uh, which is their scripture, contradicts them both and says, no, it's not to be done. Because... Um, the Mormon religion, and that's what we do here. It, uh, don't don't shoot the messengers, if you will. I'm simply restating to you in this program and all the programs we do what their teachings say. These are out of their books. I didn't I didn't make this stuff up. This is right out of quoting out of their own published materials, quoting their, their prophets, and that these are these are their sources straight from them. Uh, 
Well, folks, we got a couple minutes left here, and I'm glad because a lot of our programs are so are so full, we don't get a chance to really to really talk um, about some of the things that we think are important. And and one is this uh, TV. Uh, 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 station WTJR, uh, folks. Um, I would encourage you if if you appreciate our program and like the information that we're putting out, uh, I encourage you to write them and let them know, because mm -hmm. uh, this TV station has a responsibility to its viewing audience. That that if we're not meeting a need out there and we're not uh, providing a service and a teaching, uh, then they need to replace us with someone who better fills the needs of of Christ, quite literally. And so, um, obviously, we we enjoy this program and we want to uh, be on the Air. But I think it's important to let the station here know that you appreciate uh, this program if you do, and, and let them know. Well, I think and so also to support the stations to support with, your, this station, with your giving and your uh, money. This, and your this station cannot be on the air uh, without support from you. Right. Um, th they have no commercials. They're not receiving money from from the advertisers out there. This station purely stays on the air uh, by the gifts uh, from believers uh, to to support it. So I encourage you. I'm just if you're asking blessed, people. To, to pray for our ministry too and to pray for WTJR and I for agree. the folks that work here uh, and for prayer, the things that they prayer do. Prayer goes a, a long, long ways. And, yes. and uh, we certainly need prayer in our ministry. WTJR needs uh, prayer to support what they do. Uh, the, the folks that work here, uh, you know, all you see on camera is, is Helen and I's faces there. There's a lot of people supporting these programs. Mm -hmm. And so uh, pray for them and the success of this station, the continued ability of this station to stay on in this area mm -hmm. and to, to provide and to, grow. to this community. And to spread uh, to further out so that more people can learn of the Lord Jesus Christ and amen. what He does. Um, that's, that's the most important thing and to learn the truth of God's Word. That's the most important thing. And Absolutely. just this week, I, you know, since I didn't know what you were going to do today, but just this week, um, uh, my Bible study that I'm teaching in my home is in Romans 6 and Romans 8 about the death, um, uh, uh, the crucifixion, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that's the most important thing. He is our ultimate blood sacrifice. Amen. And that's, uh, I had no idea that this is what you're doing today, so it fit right in with what uh, I had been studying. And it's so important that we recognize that it is the blood of Jesus Christ, that He is the ultimate blood atonement and sacrifice for all of our sins. Well, folks, we, uh, we appreciate you uh, joining us again for another program, and we look forward to many more in the future. Uh, so God bless you. Stay in the Word, the B-I-B-L-E, and we'll see you next week.